Bitches in the bottom. So much better. Our next guest, he is going to join us live here on our big broadcast. And uh, if you want to get a hold of us online, you can do so at j i g g y j g u a r dot com. And of course, the Sunday radio broadcast kicks off. We've got our next guest with us today, and we go to the old Skip Skype, the old Skype Rooney. And uh, Peter joins us. Peter, how are you, sir? I'm well. Good morning. I'm good morning uh, from Arizona, at least. You are fantastic, my friend. Thank you. Um, you are making it happen, and uh, thanks for coming on the big broadcast. I'm excited to be here. I appreciate you uh, taking the time to talk. So, tell me a little bit about your latest project, my friend. So, <coughs> we're uh, in Chandler, Arizona. I work with a jiu-jitsu professor called uh, Professor Lucas Hubo. We've been working together about two years as a a student to professor relationship. And in that time, it has been obvious to me that people who start jujitsu uh, love it and it changes their life. And so we wanted to encourage people to begin their jujitsu journey. That's so awesome. we created a podcast called The Jujitsu Mindset. And every week we talk about why you should take the leap to try jujitsu. And then for those who are in it, an extraordinary amount of people give, out, give up on it before they really get the benefit of the experience. So we encourage those folks who might be just a couple of months in to not quit <clears throat> and to stay until you have a really, uh, you know, a vocabulary of movement that makes every day a lot of fun. Because jiu-jitsu takes a while to learn and it's not intuitive to many people. So it becomes intimidating for folks and they give up before they really have a chance to enjoy it. So the podcast got, has two intentions. Uh, if you haven't tried jujitsu, we want you to give it a shot. And intention number two, <coughs> excuse me, if you have tried it, to don't give up very quickly. You know, that is one thing. When I started um, doing jujitsu years and years ago, that was right. one of the things that uh, I noticed was that it is hard and people mm -hmm. give up fairly easily. Right. <laughs> they, 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 it's hard, right? It's, it's unfamiliar. Yes. Yes. Um, why is, is, is it because of that is the reason why more people don't do jujitsu is 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 that kind of the deal or yeah so we have a debt to the ufc right Ju the jiu-jitsu community has a debt to the ufc because the ufc has brought it into people's awareness and consciousness in ways that it yep. never had been before yeah however right. now people associate you know that type of interaction between people that sort of violence um as what jujitsu is. And so people are reticent to try it because they're afraid they're gonna get hurt and they think it's um, gonna be less safe than it in fact is. So if you're a kid and you play football, I promise you you're at a lot more risk to get hurt in football than you are <laughs> in jujitsu. Yes. And then if you're an adult, I'm about to be 52, when you play a weekend basketball league, you have a lot more concern about tearing your ACL than you do, um, you know, at a jujitsu school. Um, so people are hesitant to try it because they're afraid they're going to get hurt is my primary reason. And then the reason why people quit so quickly is that unless you're a wrestler um, and you know when you roll with someone who is a wrestler that they just pick this up so quickly because they're used to that physical relationship between people. Yes. Right. So if you're not, if you haven't been a wrestler, grappling is really an unusual experience for you. And um, it takes some time before your body understands like where the leverage is, where your balance yeah. is. Why am I so easily swept or, you know, um, and that, 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 uh, 
lack of understanding about why am I not good at this as opposed to a patient that says, if I just sort of put pennies in the jar, you know, a year from now, I'm going to have a lot more money in that jar. I'm going to have a lot more movements under my belt than you will in the first couple of weeks. So if you're athletic, you're used to picking things up quick. You get frustrated, like, why am I not picking this up? And then if you're not <laughs> athletic, it's you may not understand, like, hey, all things take some time uh, physically. And so, so they exit just, uh, you know, it's a shame to me because the people who've been impacted so positively uh, from jujitsu, we believe that that number is much, much smaller than it should be. Um, but they get that benefit because they hung in. You know, they stayed with it. You know, that is that is one thing. And I think also part of the <laughs> part of the um part of the reason why I think a lot of people give up on jujitsu. Um right. basic jujitsu only has like four or five belts. And right. yes. I know one of the problems that I've had locally with the local karate people is right. they've got a belt for everything. They've got a black and gold belt. <laughs> they've right. got a pink belt. They've got a black with a silver sure. stripe. <laughs> they got all these belts. <laughs> right. Right. And jiu-jitsu has a blue belt, <laughs> a brown belt, right. maybe a red belt, and a black belt. Right. And to get a blue belt, you got to be in this thing and committed for several years. <laughs> before you're even going to get a sniff at a blue belt. I, well, I couldn't agree more. Like for us, right, the white belts, it's generally, it's no less than a year on, you know, on account. Now, there may be some person who comes in with extraordinary gifts that the professor, um, you know, decides it's earlier than that. But I couldn't agree more. It's if you were need that external validation that says, you know what, I need something that says to the world, I'm better than I, I was. And there's nothing wrong with that. Like, I totally yeah. get that. But if that's something that keeps you there week to week or month to month, then it's frustrating. And from a business perspective, you know, those karate schools, that that uh, external reinforcement of you got a new stripe, you got a new, you know, belt color, you got is <laughs> yeah. keeps people engaged in a way that. Um, so the mentality of like, hey, I'm committed to something that uh, I can sort of feel my progression, and that is the thing that you get attached to um, more than, hey, somebody came and, and put the next gold star on my, you know, my chart. <laughs> yeah. And I think, frankly, it attracts a different group of people because, you know, the, the, the community that forms and the, and the slow, you know, march in progress those guys stay. And so I feel like it attracts people with a certain type of values and a certain type of work ethic. Um, that makes the community very magical in my mind. Yes. So why did you start doing jujitsu? Well, it's ironic. I, I uh, wanted to do jujitsu as an activity that um, my son, who's a teenager, uh, I thought we could do together. And so we go down to class and it's very evident in the first month this isn't for him. And it's <laughs> equally evident in the first month that it's for me. Yeah. And so he kind of exits the program, and then I stayed. And so I'm a beginner as an older person relative to the other people in my uh, school. Um, but I'm really committed to this as my physical activity. So I've, I've, I've been an athlete uh, throughout my life, and I spent a long time, my, my late, latest love before this was CrossFit. Um, and what I loved the most about CrossFit was the community of people. I mean, it was a great way to train, but it was it attracted very like-minded folks. Yeah. Um, however, as a, um, although there's lots of older people that do CrossFit happily, Jiu-Jitsu for me, um, if we just look at it as exercise, there's lots of other benefits, but as exercise, the ways that I move in Jiu-Jitsu are the ways that I want to move until I die. You know, I want to be able to get up, turn, twist, not think about what, where my body is in space. And so there's not a lot of activities you can do. If you go lift weights, you're usually moving weights in very specific patterns and repetitively. Yeah. When you roll with somebody on the mats, you're moving, you know, in whatever is natural to the moment. 
So at night when I'm 95 and I'm picking up grandchildren, I don't want to be thinking, oh, I got to go slowly down, you know, <laughs> are my knees going to make it? I just want to move. I want to pick the kid up and go, you know, I yep. carry my groceries up the store stairs. I don't want to think, oh, I got to think about it. Can I twist or can I twist? So as exercise, it matched up with me for my long-term goals very, very well. Um, and then the, the group of people that I mentioned that really seem to want to do this over long term, we're just, you know, you kind of come into some communities and you're like, these are my people. And the jujitsu folks were, in fact, my people, are, in fact, my people. That's awesome. Well, one yeah. of the things that I've noticed with, uh, with jujitsu especially is there's a lot of people that think – that it's terribly hard and oh my god am i ever going to get this and right. then before you know it they're doing all sorts of other things right. um one of one of the uh which i just found this out this morning which is amazing i i, I some of the people that i know is just <laughs> just insane but um we we go out to las vegas uh, every year for the adult video convention, the porn awards. Okay. And a few years ago we interviewed this chick and she was like a rock and roll. You could tell she was, a, she, you could tell she was a porn star and her name is karma RX. Now karma okay. eventually moves to Tennessee. She takes up jujitsu and she's just screwing around with jujitsu. Right. Well, last night, she had a profession. She had her first very, pro her very first professional grappling match on pay per view. So wow. Wow. <laughs> it doesn't take long to right. once you get rolling to be able to do all these things. The remedy to it being difficult is to have the right school. My professor creates a culture of sort of patience and teaching yes. in our school. Yes. And so if you walk into a place and they're like. All right, welcome to the jungle, and they're just tapping you out. You know, you're, you're, and that's the way you are. Nobody's gonna like that because yeah. the person, even the person a couple of months in versus the person on the first day, that's not a fair fight, and it doesn't, you know, I mean. So, yeah. when you go to explore your, your jiu-jitsu journey, you have to go and sit in on a class and see how the professor creates the culture for the group. Yes. Is it like one in which, hey, we want to submit people as quick as possible? Or is it a teaching culture where we go, hey, you guys who've been here longer, it's your responsibility. It's, you know, we're not paying you as teachers. However, the culture of, of our school, of our gym, is that you're obligated to teach the younger folks or the less experienced folks. And in that instruction, you will get better at your own technique because often if you teach something, you actually are a better practitioner of it. Yes. So the idea that it's hard, I wouldn't, I would not say to somebody, okay, it's just going to be a piece of cake. It's, it's not. However, you can learn it. Like the, it's not hard that you'll never learn it. It's just, it's hard from the standpoint is you're going to have a great sense of accomplishment yes. as every time you're like, that and you know the the difference between a professional grappler and an amateur grappler or you know very beginning generally isn't that the professional knows a hundred different techniques they know probably you know five techniques that they can do awesome like that's their game yes. they know they groove in things yes. that you learn at the beginning but they can execute them better than the beginners so you know as a you know, we the professor uh, Professor Hubo would say, you know, jujitsu is a book that every time you think you're coming to the end of having learned anything, you know, there's a hundred more chapters that get written immediately. So, <laughs> as a lifelong learner, right, you can be in jujitsu your whole life and still be learning new things. But as just enjoying it and getting good and competent, you know, you're going to learn things in your first six months that you will always practice. Yes. You will always be working on those moves. Um, and You'll know, right? If you make oh, it to yeah. a year, which we hope everybody does, and you think of yourself on day one, you know that the, the you at day 365 could whoop the person on day, you know, the person <laughs> you were on day one. You know. That's right. And then just That's extrapolate right. that out, you know, however many years. 
Well, you you really have hit on something here, my friend. This that this is this is fantastic. How do we get the podcast? How how often do you guys release episodes? Give us all the details on this. Well, th- thank you. So the podcast is called the Jiu Jitsu Mindset, and it's all the places you listen to your podcast now. So it won't be hard to find. My name is Peter Dealey, and um, my professor is Professor Luco, Lucas Hubo, and you'll see our names and our pictures on the little icon that's, and we generally record every Friday, and I do my best to uh, to get that out, you know, over the course of the weekend, um, and there we're at the beginning of this journey, we're maybe two and a half months into it, so we've got about 10 uh, you know, episodes, and we're going to go back and forth between interviewing interesting people and just talking he and I. So it's a format that will have some variety to it. And, um, you know, we're excited about that. And then we put with it, uh, we, we're working with a Brazilian coffee company that there's a local family called That's Tijoto, awesome. and they have a, yeah, they have a farm down in uh, Brazil, and they bring those beans up here to um, Arizona, roast them. And so we have a coffee line called Submission Coffee, and uh, you know that's going to be the way we're going to try to support this project of ours. So, um, you know, I have a company called A Well Run Life, and on that website you can find it. And if you type in submissioncoffee.com, you would come to our coffee project. So our goal is not <clears throat> to become multimillionaires uh, through the podcast, but you know there's expenses that are associated with it. So we want to offset those yeah. with this coffee project. And we have a commitment to each other, the professor and I, that we're going to do this for a really long time. Um, so we hope that you guys will come give a listen. And then if you have questions, you know, it's easy to find us, to ask us, you know, what are the, your concerns um, about either starting or, you know, continuing. So we're happy to help with that. And that's our mission. You know, we, we think we think that jiu-jitsu is for everybody. Uh, and so <laughs> we want folks to, to make that decision after they've, you know, give it a shot for, for quite a while. That's awesome. Well, uh, I definitely want to have you back because you are amazing. My friend, uh, <laughs> That's very kind. just, Thank you. just the, the, the whole thing I think is great. And, um, I guess I will, I will talk to you soon before we let you go. How do people get the podcast? Yeah, so uh, we have found most people on Spotify are uh, they they listen on Spotify more than they listen any place else. So if you're a Spotify okay. consumer, please go find us on Spotify. And then second to Spotify is uh, Apple Podcast. That seems to be the other place that people find us that best. Now I let you off the hook because I didn't ask any questions about your jujitsu journey, and you sound like you might be years ahead of me in this. So well, next time we talk, we I talk I definitely want to have you back so we can do that. Yeah, let's do that. <laughs> I definitely want to do that because uh, yeah. that that would be an interesting discussion about all the various people and all the various people that I've ran into over the years with, <laughs> with this whole thing. I would add, uh, I would be fascinated to um, to learn about those stories. Yes. Well, um, follow up with me. Let's let's do another one of these. Uh, and, uh, I know I've got you, uh, coming on with, I think Dan Perkins at some stage of the game. Uh, but, uh, thanks for doing this brother and follow up yeah, with me course. and let's do another one here, uh, here in a couple weeks. Oh, that sounds awesome. Thank you. All right, brother. Much, well, I will talk Appreciate to you soon. Have, have yourself a wonderful day. You too. Thank okay. you, brother. Thank there you. he goes. The Ooh. fantastic Peter Dealey. He is, uh. Just amazing. Good guy.